So did you know that there's a really easy way to get better, smoother bass response in your home theater using Room EQ Wizard, its built-in tone generator, and a measurement microphone like the U-Mic 1? Well, <laughs> neither did I. Let me show you how to do it. What's up guys, Brad here. So I want to start out this video by giving a shout out to Javon D. Green. Now he made a comment recently on one of my how to get better bass videos. And in that comment, he explained a method of tweaking subwoofer distance that not only saves a lot of time, but makes it much easier overall while pretty much taking the guesswork out of it. So while I'm making this video showing you the process, Javon was the one who brought it up to me, so a huge thanks goes out to him. Now this video will be more or less an add-on video to a previous video I did called Adjusting Sub Distance and Crossover for Better Bass. Now in that video, I go over how you can use REW and the subwoofer distance setting in your receiver to get better bass response at and around your crossover point. I also covered when and why you'd want to consider changing your crossover setting to maybe something higher. Now I'll link to that video in the card above because I'll likely just skim over some things in this video that I talked about more in depth in that video, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible in this video here. But if you do find something that's a bit confusing, I definitely suggest checking out that video I just linked to, which I'll also link to in the description. Now if you've watched any of my previous Room EQ Wizard guides, then it's pretty much business as usual as to what you'll need to follow along with this video. However, if you do need a quick refresher, you'll need the following items to tag along with me in this video for yourself. A PC or Mac running Room EQ Wizard connected to your receiver or pre-pro using HDMI, a U-Mic 1 or some type of measurement microphone, a mic stand for the measurement microphone, and possibly a USB extension cable for your measurement microphone if your main listening position is super far away from the computer that you'll be connecting it to. So attach your measurement microphone to your mic stand and place it at ear height at your main listening position pointed straight up at the ceiling. It's worth mentioning that you will find links to all the items I just mentioned down in the description below. So if it's something that you need to purchase, feel free to use those links as they do help support the channel. Now in terms of receiver or pre-pro setup, if you want to use room correction, then just make sure that you've already ran Odyssey, Direct Live, or whatever type of room correction you have before trying this out. If you're using something like Odyssey, then you'll also want to make sure that Dynamic EQ and Dynamic Volume are both disabled while doing this. Once you've finished making adjustments and you're completely done with all of the tweaks and stuff in here, you can then turn those back on if you prefer to use them. And also, you do want to make sure that your speakers are level matched before doing this as well. Now, most room correction software does an okay job with level matching but I do personally like to go back in after room correction and set the levels myself. Now it's entirely up to you if you want to take this extra manual step. I do, however, have a walkthrough on how to do that in REW in the card above if you need a little help with that. Now jumping right into Room EQ Wizard and let's go ahead and make sure we're on the same page. And by same page, I mean preferences and all that stuff is the same on both of ours so you can easily follow along. So up top here in the upper left, I'm gonna click on preferences, go down to preferences again. Under drivers, we wanna make sure that this is set to Java for this. You can use ASIO for all for something else. For this, we need to use Java. Our output device, I have my PC connected to my Denon AVR, so I'm gonna select that. And then my input device, is going to be set as the U-Mic 1. That's pretty much it for this setting here. You also maybe want to make sure that your sweep level is set to minus 12 dB FS. Anything lower, you'll have to raise the volume pretty high. So next thing we want to do is we'll go over to the Cal Files tab. And here we want to make sure that depending on your measurement microphone, you may have a measurement file or a calibration file and we want that loaded up. So you see I have the 90 degree file here loaded up. You wanna download these from your microphone's website and it should have come with the code in the box that will get you its own unique calibration file. So for me, I already have it loaded up here, but as an example, I can click on browse here. I know it's on my desktop under UMic Cal files. I'll double click on that. And then, like I said, when during the setup, you want this pointed straight up 90 degrees towards the ceiling. So that's what we will choose here. We'll click on open and now that is loaded up. Next thing, we'll just set up the overall level on our receiver. So we're giving the measurement microphone enough information to get an 
accurate reading from. First off though, we wanna make sure that any type of up mixing is disabled. So we just have the straight multi-channel signal. So you see here on my Denon AVR, I have multi-channel in, that's what I want. I don't want anything else. That's perfect. Otherwise the up mixing might end up negatively affecting the measurements and we don't want that. So also, like I said before, I made sure that Odyssey's dynamic EQ and dynamic volume is turned off. And we'll also go in and go to our speaker setup and look at our crossovers because typically Odyssey will set these a little too low. I always like to start at 80, but you can start wherever you want. You could start at 40. You just might end up needing to raise that up. So for me, I'll start at 80 for this video just as an example. So I'll set this up here and the top middle we won't worry about. If you're wondering how I got to this Denon setup thing here for my receiver, basically on Windows, I go under my network and then you'll see that my Denon AVR X 2300W is right there. I just double click on it and it opens up a browser with all the stuff here that I can adjust. On the fly, I don't need to use a remote at all. Although I'm kind of old school and I typically use the remote just to adjust the overall volume. All right, then back into REW we go. And now, like I said earlier, we wanna make sure that the volume is set up in a way that we're giving enough information to the measurement microphone to get accurate readings. So to do that, I'm gonna click on SPL meter up top here, and then I'll also click on generator right next to it. And we're actually gonna keep these open because we're gonna be using these for this video as well. But in order to set up an overall level, I'm gonna click on noise, and then I'm gonna make sure that pink random is selected and that speaker cal is selected. And everything should be left at default. If this says L plus R or R, just set this to L. Basically, we're gonna use the left channel. We're gonna bring our volume up, our overall volume on the remote, not the individual volume of the speaker, to a point where it reads 75 decibels on this SPL meter. That way, every measurement you do will be accurate and we'll have the same overall volume level set. And then for our SPL meter settings, we just wanna make sure that this is set to SPL, it's on C weighting and it's set to S for slow. This is gonna make it just a little bit easier to read these numbers. They won't be kind of fluctuating up and down so much. So right now I'm gonna hit play here on the tone generator and then you'll see that kind of uh, go up as I raise the volume up to reach 75 dB. All right, so that is good to go there. Now, basically, we're going to use our current crossover settings and our distance settings for a subwoofer as kind of a baseline. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a moment, but basically I've ran Odyssey, I've level matched the speakers like I mentioned earlier, but I haven't really touched anything other than changing those crossovers. So if we go back into the receiver, we can take a look, I have to minimize these here, we can take a look at what Odyssey set for the subwoofer and it set it at 13.8 feet. Now I have four subwoofers, so Odyssey kind of doesn't know what to do with those. It, it just sees it as one because I have it running through a mini DSP. Things might be a little more simpler for you if you just have one or two subwoofers. Since I have four, things are a little bit more complicated, but you should still be able to follow along and everything should be good. So what I'm gonna do now, we verified that our subwoofer is set at 13.8. I'm gonna go back to Room EQ Wizard and I'm gonna click on measure in the upper left. And I'm going to label this base measure 13.8 because I always wanna keep a record of what we're measuring and when we change something, I wanna make note of that as well so I can compare those measurements. Now, if I come down here, I'm gonna change the frequency range from 10 to 20,000 to just 250 because we're only focusing on the bass. We're not really concerned with anything higher than say 200 Hertz, for example. And then all these other settings over here, I'm gonna leave uh, at default but I'm gonna change one thing. Now I know we set up just the left front channel for the overall volume. I always set that to 75 dB. And then for this, when we're setting up crossovers and trying to tweak distance, we wanna measure both the left and right front speakers together. And the reason we do that is because we wanna see how the subwoofer interacts with both of those speakers at the same time. Now some people like to use the center channel speaker instead of the front left and right, and you could totally do that. Uh, but this guide is only going to cover using the left and right front channels. All right, so now that that is set, we'll click on start and let it do the measurement. Okay, and then here, once we get to this screen, we can click on all SPL, and then I'll just click on 10 to 200. And then if you kind of see something like this, where it's smaller or it's you kind of have a hard time seeing it, you can click these little plus 
there are minus buttons right here and that will kind of spread it out and that will allow us to see the dips and nulls and peaks and everything in a little more detail so now we do see that i have a, a house curve set up with the mini dsp that's fine this will work with flat or house curve doesn't matter but you'll notice that right at our crossover point around 80 hertz or so we start getting this massive null and this is basically because two things our distance of our subwoofer is set incorrectly or and and or the crossover is set too low. So a real easy way to do this though, and thanks to Javon for pointing this out, is if we hover over, if we kind of click and hover, we can see a couple of things on the left side and on the bottom. So if we look on the left, we see this is our SPL reading. So right here, where my cursor is, it's reading 80 decibels. And if we look down at the bottom here, now we are around 91. So as you could see, as you scroll through this stuff here, you could see where all the different frequencies are and what SPL they are. So if we notice that th this is a huge problem, this we're, we're missing a ton of output right here around 91. And I'm, I'm kind of picking the center of w this whole area that's been affected here. And you'll see why in just a moment. You'll see that 91, I'm at about a 66.2 decibels and I need to be kind of up here at 82, 66 to 82. That's, that's quite a big jump. So we click on the SPL meter and we click on generator. Now under generator, we want to click on tones and we just want to make sure that sign is selected. And then we'll take this number here. So let's say 91, we'll type that in and we'll just click play. And you'll notice that at 91, we should be getting around 66 decibels. Okay, so you saw we got about 65.7, but you might see where I'm going with this here. So instead of measuring and then adjusting subwoofer distance and then measuring again and then adjust it, like basically you're guessing, you can actually play this tone, adjust subwoofer distance, and then see in real time this change. And you get to a point where you get it where you need it and then that should be good. You can take a measurement to verify and then be done. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on play. It's going to play that tone and I'll go over to my receiver settings, move this out of the way. And for my subwoofer, I'm just going to add a foot. So, okay, see just by adding a foot, we went up about six decibels already. So let's go ahead and add another foot. All right, so we've gone up even more. We've gone up a total of nine decibels by adding two feet to the subwoofer. Let's keep going here and see what we get. All right, we're at 77. Remember, we need to get to about 82. So we'll keep going. So I'm just adding a foot every single time. And at some point you're going to kind of hit a ceiling to how much you can get. And you could try to push past it, but for my room here, I, I max out at around 78. Now I've, I've gone up too far. It's actually regressing and lowering that volume instead of raising it. So basically this means that my crossover is set too low for my room and my speakers. Now in that last video, I kind of went over that more in depth and I won't really go into that in this video. Definitely check that video out. But I already know that for my speakers in my room, 110 Hertz is where my crossover needs to sit. That gives me the smoothest response in my room with my speakers. It sounds awesome. Don't be afraid to raise it. A lot of people have this notion that you have to stick to 80 hertz or 60 hertz or 90 hertz or something. Don't be afraid to raise it and give it time for your ears to adjust because you could actually be robbing yourself of good sound quality and good performance. So I'm gonna go back over to my crossovers in my receiver here and I'm gonna go ahead and set these to 110 hertz on each one, because I already know that all of these need to be at 110 except for the top middle. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'll go back into my distances as well. I'll set it back to the default, which was 13.8. Go ahead and close this out here. We'll go back into REW. And I'm gonna do another measurement now because I know that 110 Hertz is where I need to be, but I'm gonna need to tweak that distance setting. So I'll put 110 Hertz X over 13.8. Everything else here is already fine. So I'll click on start. 
All right, so we still have a little bit of a null there. So this won't see a huge amount of change between the two, but when we go to start adjusting our distance, you're gonna see a massive, massive difference here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. So you notice here that I got this null right here at about 100 hertz. Again, we're at 66 and a half dB. We need to be up around 78. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna isolate that. We know we need to be around 78. And then I'll bring up the generator again. I'm just gonna type in 100, bring up my SPL meter here. And I'm just gonna basically go back into my receiver, go back into my distances, which I already have right here. And I'm just gonna play this tone and I'm gonna adjust the subwoofer distance a foot at a time until I get the output that I want. All right, see, we're already up near that area where we need to be, whereas before we kept having to add feet after feet after feet. So I'm gonna go to 15.8. I already know the setting here, obviously, because I've done this numerous times. All right, so we're at 78.9 and I'll do something here. I'm gonna stop that and then we'll go back and we're gonna do a measurement with it at 15.8. So I'm just gonna label this 15.8 and we'll see what we get here. All right, so you can already see that between 13.8, which is this green line here and 15.8, which is this blue line here, we've essentially gotten rid of these nulls here. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna also do 16.8 with the same thing, because that's actually the number that I ended up with, and I'll show you why in a moment. So 16.8. Okay, so here we went up about two to three decibels. So we can close that, go back to REW, and we'll do this measurement, label that 16.8, everything else left to default, and we'll see what we get here. Okay, so, if I turn this off, we already know that this is a massive difference and that we won't be using 13.8. But if we compare 15.8 with 16.8, you see how we get a little bit more smoothness here. It's a little more flat, which is what I want. This kind of had a little uh, sharp dips here. Not that you would actually notice this in real time listening or anything. You probably never would, but for my OCD, it helps. We also lose these little nulls here, which again, you might not notice while you're listening, but you also might. But in my brain, I'm like, I'm gonna notice those. We also improve these here, but these are some funky room things that I can't get rid of. So that is pretty much it. So 16.8, if we go back and we compare it to what we started with, which was 80 Hertz, 13.8 feet on the distance of the subwoofer. It was this, this really bad null here, lack of base, to this. Nicer looking, much more smooth, and we're actually getting much better response, which means our bass will sound a lot better in our home theater. So after doing this a few times in practice and testing for this video, I can honestly say that this method saves me so much time. And it basically takes all the guesswork out of this process, which is always a good thing when you're talking about trying to dial things in and tweak things to get better performance. Again, a huge thanks to Javon for bringing this up in the comment section of my previous video. And if you enjoyed this video and feel that you got value out of it, hit that like button. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, consider clicking the subscribe button along with the bell icon so you never miss out when I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.